Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. What's up? What's up? Nothing. Man, it's uh, it's Thursday. Mm-hmm. We're into uh, this new year, 2019. 2019. So how, 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 how have your goals been? Uh, so far, so good. So far, so good. So far, so good. Good job. And in case you guys missed it... The Ransom Bible Study is now available to everyone on there our website. Go. If you go to DoctrineAndDevotion.com, mm. look at the Resources tab, drop-down menu. Not only will you see a link to the 1689 website, but also a link to the Ransom Bible Study method. If you're not using that, it, this is a great time to do. I Pick love, it up. Oh, you love what we made? I love what we made. I know. It's like, <laughs> gosh, it's so good, guys. You know what else is up, though? Yeah. Uh, over at the website? Mm-hmm. If you head on over to Doctrine and devotion.com slash conference. Yeah. You can see the schedule. That's right. The 2019 conference on biblical theology. What's going down, when it's going down, how it's going down, where it's going down, everything. It's going to be good. The times, the speakers. The we place. already know that, but I'm talking about like, yeah. you'll see when each time. Yeah, you'll see exactly. the flow of it. Yeah, minute by minute. Minute by minute. This year, we're offering worship. We got we have worship. Breakout sessions, Man. break dancing, spoken word. No, no, neither no? of those. Oh. No, oh, sorry. no. My bad. But we will have someone up on stage painting during the preaching. Yeah. And then we're going to auction that off. But not for charity. No, 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 no. no, 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 no for no, cigars. No. For cigars. <laughs> for cigars for, for Saturday night. So, um, hey, remember that time where uh, we were at the cigar shop and uh, we, oh, were, we were always at the cigar shop? Right, remember that time we were at the cigar shop riffing on complementarianism and oh, then yes. we, uh, we, we, Posited this this hypothetical uh, sort of thought experiment thing. We were like, well, hey, couldn't maybe, you know if uh, could could a woman preach at a local church on a Sunday morning and be within the bounds of complementarianism? Yeah, yeah. And you and I said, well, yeah, I think that could work. And here's yep. how it could work. And, mm. um, and, and do you remember the pushback we got? Uh, did people push back? Yeah. So, um, so we, we've gotten enough requests. We thought, okay, we'll go ahead and we will clarify mm. our complementarian for our complementarianism yeah, for everyone. It, come on, rest assured, we are complementarians. Yeah, we ain't got time for them women. Wait, what? No, is that too much? <laughs> no, 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 oh, no we're not much. that kind of complementarian. No, 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 no. All right, and you got to understand, guys, like. Especially with like those videos where we're driving around or we're sitting at the cigar shop, like we're talking, riffing, and exploring ideas. And so, th- what was going on there is we were we were talking about this idea of you know can women preach on a Sunday? Now we try to clarify all the time we are Danvers Statement complementarians. Yes. Right? So um, as it, we've already explored all of that before, so we were talking about a very specific issue. Is it possible for a woman to preach on the Lord's Day in a local church? And we said that if people allow non-elders to preach yes. uh, from the pulpit on the Lord's Day, those men preaching do not have authority. Uh, we've, I, I've, I've explained this to people and they go, well, of course well, they define have a, authority. Oh, great. Paul Maxwell's Paul, calling. You know what? He just called me. Yeah. Decline. We're in the middle, dude. I know. Right. So. <laughs> I love you, Paul. But not You called m- us both right now. Yeah. So what was it? Oh yeah, no, I forgot what I was. So yeah, you're talking about if you allow a non-elder, yeah, yep. So if you allow a non-elder to do it, they they don't have authority from the position of elder. The word, of course, has authority, but they don't have authority. They are not exercising authority over the congregation. No, the word is exercising authority. Yes, but the man is not. They are not one of the shepherds of the church. Right. So if that's the case, you allow people to preach who do not have authority. Therefore, in theory. We were trying to say you could have a woman preach who does not have authority uh, to actually communicate the word. Now, we don't do that. Uh, and I think what we said at the time was uh, at at best, yeah. it is uh, unclear. Uh, at worst, it's sin. It's wrong. Yeah. And so uh, we don't do it. And we don't. The reason we and it, we part of the reason we don't do it is it would confuse the issue. Right. It would confuse the issue of of. Um, of the role that pastors have to play, the, yeah. the, the the people that we have preach are generally those people that are called to ministry, correct? Called the pastoral ministry. So even if they aren't functioning as an elder in our church, they're moving in that direction. So uh, that's really all that we were trying to say. So um, we don't believe that women should preach 
on Sunday in the local church, uh, we just were saying it's a hypothetical possibility that it would fall within the bounds of orthodoxy to do such a thing yes. if you allowed uh, non-ordained men to preach. That's all that we were saying. And um, again, thought experiment. We like talking. And we, we don't mind sharing. We don't mind even misspeaking and having to go back like yeah, we are now. Yeah, and say, we don't mind being wrong. We'll, we'll clarify. We'll clarify. We, we should have been more clear. We should have. Uh, I, I, I don't know if we should have been. We... We could have been more clear, and we want to be as clear and as faithful to Scripture as we can. But part of the issue here that I hear from people is, you know, women can't preach at all. In fact, I was dialoguing with a brother just this weekend on the issue, again, on social media, and saying, like, well, it, it, a lot of this has to do with how you define preaching. Like, what is preaching? And and where is this preaching happening? Can women preach at all? And this brother's argument was, nope, it's very clear. Uh, women cannot preach under any circumstances. And so my response was, well, okay, you and I may agree, but I would have to adopt your definition of preaching, which in my estimation is a very narrow definition. Yeah, very, yeah. And he goes, it's not narrow, it's biblical and the whole thing. So, Oh, of course, the nice yeah, little trump uh, card. It's, it's biblical. All right, so um, let's just say this. Um, when I read the New Testament, when I read the book of Acts, for example, uh, even outside of the local assembly, when evangelism is happening, it's called preaching. It's a proclamation. Preaching is a is a heralding of the good news. Yes. So when we say preaching, what we're talking about is the heralding of the good news. We are not necessarily meaning, when we say the word preach, we are not always meaning um, an exposition of Scripture by a pastor on the Lord's Day among the congregation. Correct. Now, maybe we mean that most of the time, but that's not always what we mean. No. So I think people are preaching the gospel. I think my wife should preach the gospel, and she does preach the gospel. My wife preaches the gospel uh, when she's at a conference speaking uh, to a bunch of women. She's preaching. Um, I'm she not gonna... preaches the gospel to your kids. Right. We, 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 we and all Christians are called to herald, to proclaim Christ's excellencies. If that's not preaching, I don't know what is. Yeah, and when nece- you know, if necessary, use words. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need that nonsense in here. So the, part of that is, is – that is a part of the problem for us is that um, how you conceive of preaching. You know, we, we, we read in scripture of, of women prophesying. Um, uh, we read of, of women uh, testifying or proclaiming in, in association with their, their husbands. Um, we, we see women functioning in all these ways. So n- no, we do not think that women – can occupy the office of pastor biblically or yeah, yeah. pastor elder, pastor, elder same yep, thing shepherd, right yep so that is limited to not just men it's limited to qualified called men yep. that's not every man to. can be an elder that's right that's right so it's it's limited to a, a very specific group um, and yes male is a part of that limitation um, but when it comes to preaching i think that we need to understand that it, it, preaching takes different forms right and so yes if if you're saying when you say when you use the word preach and you're pushing back against us and you're defining it narrowly, preaching as expository preaching of the word by a pastor on Lord's Day, then fine. Women don't do that. Women don't mm-hmm. preach. But I conceive of the word a bit more broadly. And so this doesn't move mm, us at I, all. I saw what you did there. Well, you know, broadly. you gotta include I'm not saying it. I'm not I saying it. Yeah, it's 2019. It's new, it's new me. Say, it's new, new you. New yes. The broads. So anyway. <laughs> we're horrible. Um, we're horrible. Actually, well, to a lot of, you know, hardcore complementarians, we're really good right now. Because, oh, yeah. See, we kind of got a little bit more cred. We got a little bit more cred by, there by, by using a bad <laughs> by word being for women. Rude. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, part of our problem, though, is when we talk about this, is that complementarianism has... Uh, I don't want to say evolved, maybe devolved, or it has become something ugly in certain uh, among certain tribes and among certain teachers. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Complementarianism has become uh, this this perspective on men and women that has now. Uh, infiltrated every aspect of life so that all aspects of society, right. culture, everything. So that like, you know, the idea of a woman being the leader of a governmental power is inappropriate or uh, a women, police officer, police officer, uh, lifeguard. Yeah. You know, and maybe I'd be for that. Maybe no, no, you know, I've never heard anyone say, well, that I'm just saying like, uh, well, you know what though, but they're going to have authority. They get to blow the whistle and kick you out of the pool. I don't like that. No. Nope. Plus bikinis, you know, that's awkward. Being saved by somebody in a bikini. I mean, I'd rather be saved, but it could be awkward. Someone, it'd be, you'd rather it be like some dude? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be a little less awkward. The whole bikini thing is weird. I'll, I'll say that. 
The bikini thing is weird. When you go to the beach. But I've beach, seen you in your mankini. That yeah, you wore, that you go for, you as a man, when you're I'm, not tempting, I'm yeah. not tempting anybody. No, no, nobody's confused. <laughs> no, no, there's a lot of clarity when you're on, when you're on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of clearing of the beach. No, man, like, but people start applying this stuff to everything. And so we, our view of complementarianism, and, and we, we say it all the time, right? We're soft complementarians, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, we're not, we're not hardcore, uh, you know, against women and we don't uh, apply this principle to every sphere of life. But when it comes to authority and headship in the home and authority in the church, uh, we, we definitely see this. That's where it's applied, right? That's, that's where it's primarily applied. Um, so the, the reason why we sometimes explore the issue and talk about it, the way that we do is because there it is we're we're uh, in a sense responding or sometimes just reacting yeah. to what i think are unfair and inappropriate um perspectives on this that not only diminish what some of god's people can do women in this case uh, but also it becomes dangerous for some women who are told to you know endure their abusive husbands and uh, yeah. a, a quietly and submissively. I know that's an extreme example. Very it, extreme, yeah. But it is an example. It, and unfortunately, it's a reality for some. Yeah, it, absolutely. I mean, if you spend any time in ministry with, with a congregation that's being honest, you will have to deal with spousal abuse. You'll deal with it. Unless unless the people aren't being real with you, unless they, they can't come to you and talk to you about it, you're going to deal with it. I've been in ministry for over 20 years, and uh, I can tell you that I've seen it. I've, I've had to deal with it. We've had to... Go into people, homes, yeah. go into homes, and tell people to get out. We've had to call authorities. We've had to, we have, we've had to counsel separation. We've had to do all kinds of stuff. And in the end, we see God do great things. So I'm sensitive to the issue of, of abuse, but I'm also sensitive to the issue of equipping people to do their best in their callings. So, like, I remember, like, we started Leadership Lab a long time ago. Yeah, I was actually going to bring that up. I was going to say this is also born out of we're going through those. We've been going through this yeah. thought process. It was over here. Over a year and a half, right? It was about a year and a half of elders discussing, yeah. working through this. All right. So, like, we haven't figured everything out. I know some of you guys have the luxury of having everything figured out. We don't. We have not. Yeah. So, yeah. like, it must we're, be nice. We're studying and we're learning. And so, when we started Leadership Lab, um, it was to train up and equip uh, men to become the best leaders that they could be. They're not all going to be pastors. Some of them will be deacons. Some of them will be elders. Some of them will be community group leaders. Some of them are just being developed as leaders so that they can go on to write or yeah. lead in their workplace. Yeah. yeah, yeah, And then it was brought to our attention, like, well, then why not women? If it's not just for elders, if it's for people who aren't going to serve in a capacity that is limited to called qualified males, then why aren't women in leadership lab? Yeah, why are we not helping shepherding these women who are reaching out to others? How are we, right. Why are we not taking care of them uh, and equipping them to do what God has called them to do in their sphere of influence. Right. So, yes, we see the, pr- the principle in Scripture that you know older women are to disciple younger women, and so we believe in that. That's really good. But it is the the responsibility of the elders to shepherd the flock. Yeah. Right. And and part of our job is to raise up those leaders, and so equipping leaders, women leaders in their appropriate roles, male leaders in their appropriate roles. So we prayed about it. We studied it, we dialogued, and a year and a half later, we go, okay, we're, we're going to open this up, make sure that Leadership Lab is for men and women. And from that group of people, we're going to be able to identify and then further help it to equip those people to do whatever God has called them to do. So, Michelle, your wife is in there, my wife is in there. Uh, a lot, a lot of our ladies are, are, are in that thing, and they're getting the opportunity then to, to exhort and to and to teach and then be critiqued on their delivery by their peers so that they can get better at it, which is what yeah. we do with the men. Now, we have some people that are going to want to say like, well, wait, 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 wait. So you have women preaching to a mixed audience then. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. We do. We do. But we would say a couple of things. One, this is a class where we're teaching, preaching, and and uh, and teaching and communication. So uh, there's that. But also, this is not the gathering of the church on the Lord's Day. This is is something else. And we are not afraid to say that uh, a woman can teach uh, or preach, however you want to define the word, that women can exhort from the word a mixed group of people outside of the Sunday gathering. I don't have a problem with that. Jimmy doesn't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem learning from a woman at a conference. Um, I don't think think that's a a problem. I don't think that's... I'm only going to believe half what she says, you know, because she's a woman. Yeah, and but she's then, only going to get half right. That, so you can right. believe so the, that, the right half. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're horrible people. 
<laughs> I, listen, we can make the joke because we don't believe it. <laughs> so, you can't make the joke if you believe listen, it. Listen, 2019 is not going off well for well, us. I feel like I feel like it's pretty good. I feel, I feel like, like as a unit, we're not coming off pretty strong here. <laughs> yeah, well, I feel like we're coming on pretty strong, actually. <laughs> So yeah, like and so it, it's of course it's possible that I'm wrong here. I don't think I am. Jimmy doesn't think he is. Uh, it's possible that our uh, people that oppose this idea is wrong. But yeah, I'm just I, I don't care who's preaching at a conference as long as they're preaching the truth. Yeah. When it comes to the local church on the Lord's Day, that's a different ball game for us. So that's where we land to try to clarify our complementarianism. We don't like a lot of what passes for complementarianism because it's ugly. Um, we do like what we see in some areas of complementarianism. In fact, this is why we want to have on the illustrious, the renowned mm. Denny Burke. Yeah, we'd love to have him on. Hey, Denny. Well, you know what? Denny said he's game. We just haven't reached. We, yeah, man. We just got we got to set up a time. You should be calling us. He did. He sent an email. Oh, uh, now, now call. Call me, beat me <laughs> if you want to reach me. That's what, that's what you say. I mean, we reached out to him and then he reached back. And then we didn't reach out again. Yeah. We're going to have Denny Burke on because we want to talk to him about uh, complementarianism. And specifically, like, we actually want to ask him and we want to flesh out this idea. Where is complementarianism healthy and where is modern complementarianism going wrong and going astray? As the president of the uh, Council for Biblical Manhood and Womanhood, yep. uh, this is a guy to talk to. And we, we like Denny. So um, we're going to have him on the podcast. So stay tuned for that unless he says no. Unless he's no, I, scared. No, he's he's in. Oh, he's in. He's, he's already he's already responded. Yeah. Okay. All right, Denny. Okay. Yeah, it's on us. All We're right. the ones that are holding All right. it up. So if he's not on next week, it's because he's hiding. No, it's because of us. <laughs> <laughs> if he's not on next week, it's because he's too scared. Yes, <laughs> it's because of us. Oh, okay. Either way. <laughs> Either way. So yeah, man. I I think that um, more churches could do a really. Uh, do a much better job, and we're trying to do a, a, a better job in this um, with with how we disciple the men and the women of the church, yeah. especially because we're a young church. We're you know 11 years old and we're still figuring things out. I can remember when we started the church and this family's asked us, so, you know, you're complementarian. And we're like, yeah. And they're like, okay. And they weren't, they weren't complementarianism, but they, they were, they were cool. And they were with us for years and years. And so they were asking at the time, so what can women do and what can't women do? And so I began to run through what my perspective and they said, okay, so it sounds like women could be doing these things. Uh, and they listed some things out and I said, that would be fine. And they asked, then why aren't they doing those things? Why do you only have men doing everything when you could have women doing some of these things, yeah. which was a very fair point of a very, a very good, um, I think issue for them to bring up. And that's when we began to say like, okay, so let's make sure that we're bringing in as much participation from the body wherever necessary. Mm -hmm. and let, let, me, let me clarify something else too, tangentially related. Uh, a little while ago on, we had a uh, home girl on Julie Roy's. Remember yeah, her? Yeah. All right. And so, uh, we got we got some love for that. Boy, we got some hate from some people. Some of her, I think, some of her fans oh. did not like us. Ooh, man, Ooh, they you're were bringing that up. Well, I want to bring up one thing. Okay, <laughs> uh, one of the guys was saying, "You said, speaking to me, you said that you don't have any more authority than anybody else in the church." And um, so I responded. He didn't respond back, but I responded. And so, in case you heard me say that, uh, what I was trying to communicate was. I don't have any more authority than any other elder on the team. As lead pastor, I don't carry more weight, right? So I'm not the CEO. No. I am a pastor among four other pastors. Yeah, we don't McDonald this thing. No, we don't. We don't. We don't. Uh, we don't. We don't have one guy that's at the top. We don't have three people uh, in the inner circle who control everything. It is a an elder team, and every elder has equal authority, and we work together. So that was the point that I was trying to make. It's not really related to complementarianism, but I thought I better go ahead and address it because uh, some, issue of authority. Some people, yeah, some people were uh, were tripping. We're tripping pretty hard, so. <laughs> well, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, you can follow us online. Not all of their thoughts. Okay, let's be <laughs> some honest. Of you, we'd love to hear some of your thoughts. If you have good thoughts, on Instagram and Twitter, at thoughts. Doc and Devo, or on Facebook, slash thoughts. Doctrine and Devotion. Every you thought can head you have. You can have the website, priest. There you can contact Going us. You can set up an email blast. Talking about all your thoughts. <laughs> JoeFoStore.com. Fresh Pod, <laughs> every Monday and Thursday. Blog posts on Wednesdays. Video content, when available, later. Later.